as you both know, I've, I'm very uh, involved in Okinawa's uh, movements in terms of um, trying to reduce some of the military burden in Okinawa uh, and also Okinawa's independence movements. So what do you think is something that uh, maybe West Papua is doing uh, that Okinawa is not doing? And why, why, is, why is West Papua uh, seemingly more successful so far in its independence uh, movement? Yeah, because, because it has done exactly what you suggested, which is to raise the profile and to al alert people about what's going on. West Papua has been at it for a long time. They've had people traveling the world um, and by the way, it's a very poor country, and we're talking about people having to go to many, many different meetings and showing up for years. Um, so it's really a sacrifice uh, for for them to do so. Um, but they have been they have been faithful in doing so, and that as a result, they've talked to many, many different countries about their situation and won over quite a bit of support uh, from individual countries. So this is why, particularly the entire Melanesian Spearhead Group, the, uh, the Pacific Islands Forum. They're very active in, in um, approaching the uh, African Union and those um, bodies. So um, they're doing well in that respect, but it's still, you know, it's, it's very awkward bec or, um, how would you say, unfair, because um, one country like Indonesia can actually stymie the entire effort that has been going on for many years. Another uh, great case is the case of Western Sahara, which I've, I've been involved in as well. And Western Sahara is under, Morocco claims that Western Sahara is part of, of, of Morocco. The, Western, the, the people from Western Sahara have been campaigning for many years. They've gotten numerous UN resolutions passed uh, supporting their independence. They've gotten um, many countries, uh, over 30 countries, I believe, to support their independence. Still, Morocco refuses to budge, and West Papua is still under Morocco. And we're talking about a 50, 60 year struggle that's still going on. So, it, it's, um, it, there are many countries. So, Okinawa uh, is, is a classic example of, um, you know, a a, ter uh, uh, a country that should be independent and should be able to exercise its right to self-determination. De Not it doesn't have to exercise that. It's an independent country, similar similar to Hawaii. But uh, Japan, of course, is insistent of, of its claim to Okinawa, and it's very difficult to budge a country that insists that, that that's a claim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any advice? For ok Okinawa. Yes, uh, similar to West Papua, raise raise your um, uh, visibility, a as you have done on, over the internet. That that's very effective. But you're going to have to also raise the visibility within the international community, because what's going to happen is one breakthrough is going to trigger the others as well. And if we can get into the position of being on the verge of of having a uh, a, a change happen in our favor, um, then all the better. But if we're not prepared for it, um, then, uh, you know, if it does come, if, if the, the change does come and we're not prepared, then we, we lose that momentum, we lose that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, as you both know, uh, there's this situation in Okinawa currently going on at a place called Hinoko where the Japan government is building a new U.S. military base over this coral reef uh, filled with hundreds of rare and endangered species. It's completely against the will of the Okinawan people. Um, but Japan and the United States continue to uh, completely ignore uh, uh, the, the will of the, the Okinawan people. And not only that, uh, there's, there's many other uh, serious issues um, in Okinawa related to the military or or specifically too much military in too small of an island. So what do you guys think uh, is the problem here and, and what 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 is uh, something that Okinawa can do? I, I had a really good discussion with um, 
an international lawyer. He's very prominent uh, international lawyer. And um, we were discussing the Hawaii situation, and I was asking him, you know, what legal actions can should we take? And and he basically said, you can take all kinds of legal actions, but it would make no difference. He said that um, even uh, in any legal um, procedure is actually still governed by politics. And so he said that what we need to do is create the political will or the political momentum uh, for our movement. And that is exactly what we're talking about, getting more people aware of it so that, so that there is general support for our positions and for our aspirations. Um, so he said that, that courts will actually respond to that kind of political uh, pressure, so to speak, even though they claim they don't. But he said it, they, they do, especially international courts. Um, they, so, uh, so the idea is to make your presence known uh, much, much better in the arenas where uh, diplomats, international, um, uh, the international community is participating. Yeah, so we're talking about the United Nations, the European Union, um, and various other bodies, the um, Organization of um, Islamic Cooperation, African Union, uh, uh, you know, these, these bodies, to send representatives to these places to speak about what was happening and to develop media uh, that can be accessed by people once they hear something about you and they want to Google and find out something. There needs to be information that's accessible uh, that, that can fill people in about the situation. So, you know, I've gotten a lot of uh, support from, from many Okinawans uh, due to my work in trying to stop um, this military base at Henoko and, you know, to try to help reduce Okinawa's military burden. Uh, as well as to my support for o Okinawa's independence, uh, but I've also uh, I've also got in some opposition from some Okinawans, uh, not not because they disagree with my stances or ideology, but they don't like me making your, your waves. <laughs> they don't like me making waves, and uh -huh. I've 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 made a lot of waves. Uh, I've gotten a lot of attention on social media, a lot of attention uh, uh, from the, uh, the press, from the mainstream media. And and uh, there have actually been a, a, a small minority of Okinawans who have attacked me, uh, telling me to stop, be, s simply because they don't like me making waves and they don't like uh, you know all this attention. So wh what do you guys think of that? Yeah, well, th yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a real conundrum because if you don't make waves, you don't get noticed, you know. Um, and like I said, you know, the the most effective wave is to pick up arms and go to go to war uh, and then you get notice we don't want to go that far and and I'm not saying that you are because we by, uh, we're not doing that but um, if you don't stir things up it, it'll never come to anybody's attention uh, to me waves are words you know it's the way you use words and words uh, can be used to challenge people Mm -hmm. and to uh, encourage them to think and to feel. And right. this is what people need. They need to be uh, stirred to feeling what other people feel everywhere in the world, not just in their own uh, home. Mm -hmm. Okinawans are generally uh, very much against making waves or, uh, or uh, drawing attention or <clears throat> causing trouble or things like that. Uh, Which is really a wonderful uh, characteristic in many ways, but in 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 areas of dealing with a um, uh, a westernized um, system of government or governance, you know, like Japan and the United States and the yeah, United Nations and the United Nations, yeah, especially the United Nations, uh, it's it's uh, it's not you don't get any you don't get anywhere by simply being nice. So basically, what what you both are saying, I think, is that uh, if Okinawans don't make waves, then there's never going to be any positive changes for Okinawa, and that the current problems are going to persist. Right? Yes. Right. Americans, 
Americans won't respect you. They won't respect Okinawans if they don't make waves. They respect people who make waves. That's what they that's what they relate to. They understand yeah. when you're making waves that you feel something you're feeling and thinking that you need to express and they need to feel and hear also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're nice, they interpret that as you're simply a compliant and yeah. with their opinions and with their views. They don't see that you have a different views and feelings than them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just part of the culture in America. That's a way of trying to show other people you care. You make waves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, <clears throat> I really think that um, America, America in general, Americans in general don't respect Okinawa, don't have any respect for Okinawa. And, you know, I've been to Washington, D.C. twice uh, to, to meet with U.S. government officials about Okinawa. And, and uh, while they're interested, there just isn't much respect for Okinawa. I think in part because Okinawans don't stick up for themselves. Okinawans don't make waves. And they, some of them even attack me for making waves. Yeah. yeah. Well, respect is an interesting word because it's, uh, some people say respect is earned, but I don't agree with that. I think that respect is understanding. If you are ignorant about something, you can't respect it. And so Americans really don't know the issues. They don't know the story. They don't know about Okinawans. So that's why they don't respect Okinawans. So an o Okinawans have to make some waves to make themselves heard and known by the people in the U.S., and then we will respect you as we get to know you. Right. And, you know, once people actually become aware of the situation, that's, there's no guarantee they're going to do anything about it either. So they're, along with gaining respect, you also have to motivate people some, to some kind of action. In other words, they need to care enough about your situation that they will actually do something. Uh, and that's the second hurdle that we have, you know, uh, to, to motivate people to do something about it. Um, and so, um, in, in the case of uh, West Papua, for instance, you know, the, the bloodshed and all that is a pretty strong motivation, motivating factor. Once people learn about what's going on there, then they become motivated to try to stop the, the violence. Um, and and uh, so we need to be creative in thinking how we can motivate people without having to resort to violence or putting ourselves uh, into yes. the, yeah, that situation. It's trying not to incite the crowd, you know. It's finding uh, key people who can represent you and uh, making waves. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm more than happy to make waves uh, to help us a friend or help uh, other people where they need someone to represent them because if they go and make their own waves, then they're going to be misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. But when you see other people standing up for Okinawan people, you know, then people will start to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, people like me, Americans, as they get edu informed and learn about these things. Uh, they'll want to make some waves too. Mm -hmm.